spread art and music and culture throughout the city. Yes. To show that that's a, that's a way to get people engaged, that's a way to get people involved. And one of my real goals is, I know that uh, the mayor who shall not be named has uh, picnics. And we want to do a lot of that too. We want to we want to get out and, and do picnics in a, a lot of the we want to do in Scarborough and Etobicoke and North York. We want to get out and, and bring music to people and and show show them that we're we're friendly downtown and, and and bridge that gap. There seems to be an artificial gap created between us. We want to bridge that gap between us. We're all part of the great city, so let's bridge the gap. Be friends through music and have fun. And here we go. I don't know, but I thought I would just throw that out there. Okay, anyway, aside from all that, this guy cares about the city. I noticed in, sh in a couple of magazines, they were saying, and we have some fringe candidates. He's beyond the fringe. He's like, he's like an after the fringe theater that ends up on Broadway. But he's not drowsy, and he only drives a bicycle. Richard Underhill! Thanks, Pete! If I'm not successful, next time we'll have to get V to run for mayor. What do you think about that? Skeletons in the closet, Richard. Skeletons in the closet. <laughs> Richard Underhill for mayor! <laughs> yeah, but he's got a perfect slogan. It's time for Plan B. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, I hope that's okay. Letting that out. <laughs> oh, no, it's yours, man. James B, ladies and gentlemen, personality on radio, stage and screen editor. Weekday mornings on Jazz FM and also in, on weekends from 6 to 8? Or, yes, that's what I thought it was. I'm a little confused about when exactly he's on. He's always on my mind. Once again, I think I met Sophia about 10 years ago at Koss Restaurant just down the street here in Kensington. And boy, oh boy, could she ever sing then and boy oh boy can she ever sing now. So it's a real pleasure to share the stage with her. A woman with a very big heart and a great voice and a great sense of community like all of us here tonight. Sophia Perlman, ladies and gentlemen. Now that you've said that on the mic, no, but if you haven't, yes, you have, or you among many have, and, and would like to volunteer for the campaign, even if it's brainstorming, great ideas person, whatever you think your skill is, sign up here with an email, phone number optional, but always nice, for those last minute texts, there will be flash mobs, ladies and gentlemen, even though that is an old term. So, yes, thank you so much. And would you like a pen for that? Uh, you have one? I've got one. There you go. So that's going around. My wife Susie is accepting donations if you'd like. There she is. She will take a, a donation if you'd like to give a donation to the campaign. But don't feel obliged. There'll be plenty of time. And just by being here, you're making a great donation. And you're making a great contribution to what has already exceeded my wildest dreams. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.
tell your friends, this is a serious campaign. We could do better than we have right now. We could do better with Richard Underhill. May the best player win! <laughs> Thank you, James. With friends like you, I can go a long way, and we can go a long way. I do appreciate it. James B., ladies and gentlemen, a cultural icon. I see many cultural icons here tonight, actually. So just a, pre uh, a brief introduction once again for some of you who may have gone here late. Uh, I've been thinking about city politics for a while. Maybe one of the moments of clarity that I had was going down to the core services review deputation that happened three or four years ago when Rob Ford first got into power. And the hinge from two years ago? Okay, it's only two years ago, thanks very much. Ange Valentini, ladies and gentlemen. Someone who works for this ward every day. Thank you. And it's a complicated ward, I must say. People have said to me, Good God, Mayor, it's a crazy, you know, like that's such a big job. Why are you taking on such a, you know, why are you even thinking about taking on such a big job? But my counselor is Adam Vaughn, and there are how many development projects in this ward? 150. There are 150 development projects in this ward. Can you imagine how difficult that must be on a reduced budget to try and deal with all the issues with parking and with public space and all that 150 development projects in this ward alone. So I looked at that and went, you know what, mayor is the easier job. Counselor is a tough job downtown, it really is a tough job with a small staff. I am just amazed at how hard those people work and you know, I know there's a lot of people in the media that like to bash politicians. Oh, they're just doing this and that. And, and there are certain politicians that have given the idea of being a politician a bad name. But most of the politicians that I know and have been fortunate enough to get to know are really, really hardworking people. So let's have a hand for the really, really hardworking big politicians out there. Because they get a, they get a bad rap. And it's really easy to complain. And one thing we, you know, there are problems and, and we want to fix things and we feel taxed, you know, literally we feel taxed. But we have to remember that we're living at a, at a time and in a place that it's, we are really some of the luckiest people to ever have been alive. Ladies and gentlemen, we really are. We hope that our luck hangs on for a little while longer, and that's part of why I wanted to get into this, because what I really believe is that we need to build a more sustainable city. We need to be able to access our food close by, because we don't know what's going to happen. Climate change has sort of changed the whole game, and so we really need to take care of what we're doing here and now, and be able to at least ameliorate our situation by drawing from our local region. And this is what has been so, so successful for cities around the world for thousands of years. You go to Germany and you see that the cities are very compact because they were developed before the era of the car. And so there's little town fields for growing crops, little town fields for growing crops. We don't have that, but we really need to incorporate some of those ideas within the city. You know, we lost a lot of trees in this last ice storm problem. And one of the statistics that I heard, and I hope I'm right, is, I, well, I hope I'm wrong, but I think I'm right, is that the, the budget for tree pruning and for tree maintenance in the city is one quarter of what it was under the old city of Toronto, which was a much smaller area. It's great, yeah, and those things, are kind of easy to, well, it's just trees, we'll just cut that, and we'll, you know, the police budget is really the most important thing, because we've got to, and you know, I think those kinds of decisions get made, those kinds of decisions about infrastructure get made, without thinking ahead of the possible consequences, and what, what we've seen is what happens when that happens.
So we have to invest. It's no going to pay taxes. By the way, I just want to let you know that although I may be a socially progressive person, I am fiscally responsible. <laughs> Boring, yes, indeed. I don't want to pay any more taxes than I have to either. But as I said before, ideas are free. If we can come up with some creative ways to solve our problems, if we can borrow from some of the great cities in Europe and around the world that have faced similar problems that we have faced and have come up with innovative solutions, we can do well. We don't have to break the bank and we can make this city a thousand times better for half the price. Now that's a promise that you'd think someone out there would make. <laughs> but I believe it. We can make the city a lot better with the collective imagination and collective creativity that we have as individuals. And so that's what I want to harness during this campaign. And that's why I need all of you to be on board. It doesn't matter about money. It matters about ideas and it matters about time and it matters about spreading the word that we want to make positive change, that we can make positive change, that we can work together and stop this rift that we have between us, that we can join together and become a, the great city that we are just waiting to become. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to play a bit more music.